The third step in the U.S. Secret Service operational guide is create a central reporting mechanism. Welcome back. I'm Kyle Anderson. And I'm Holly Hollingsworth. In this step, we'll discuss how the reporting mechanism can work, what information it provides, how and to whom. Within our previous videos, some of our experts have mentioned reporting mechanisms like the See Something, Say Something app or Colorado's Safe to Tell app. Here in Ohio, the Ohio School Safety Center within the Ohio Department of Public Safety offers a reporting mechanism called the Safer Ohio School Tip Line, which schools in our state can use free of charge. Coming up in a moment, Emily Mayfield of the Ohio School Safety Center will explain some of the basics about how the Safer Ohio School Tip Line works. But first, we learn the importance of the state infrastructure that's behind it. U.S. Secret Service National Threat Assessment Center Chief Dr. Lena Altari says the state's 24-7 tip line operations are important to ensure the information received is acted on. When the Department of Homeland uh, Security years ago coined the phrase, see something, say something, you know, you just hear it and you're like, oh, that's maybe something that no one really listens to. But it actually does work, that we want people to see something, recognize a behavior that's concerned, but if they do recognize it, they need to know where to go. They need to know who to report that information to, which is, again, why it's important to have a multidisciplinary team getting this information, because that information needs to also be acted on. And so if you're going to have a reporting mechanism, whether it's a phone number in a school or an app that someone can text a tip to, you want to make sure you have the infrastructure in place behind it so someone's acting on it so that things don't fall through the cracks because we know that would be effective if someone acts on it, starts a threat assessment, and mitigates any possible threats. So the Ohio School Safety Center operates a 24-7 free anonymous reporting system for schools. Um, so the central reporting mechanism is paid for by the state. Um, any school can sign up to use this free resource. You can call, you can text, you can submit information through our Safer Ohio app. Um, you can call or text within the app as well. Um, but you can share information to the tip line up to the state level. The state will then analyze it and pass it to the correct first responders. The school administrators and provide resources to intervene if necessary. The central reporting mechanism should be promoted both inside and outside the school. For students and other stakeholders, promotion about the central reporting mechanism should explain how it works, why using it will benefit them, and emphasize that those who send in information can remain anonymous. Ohio school districts can register to use the Safer Ohio School tip line, but every school and every Ohioan can use it, whether your school is registered or not. Information about the Safer Ohio School tip line, 844-SAFER-OH, which is 844-723-3764, can be found online at saferschools.ohio.gov. Emily Mayfield explains how information received at the Safer Ohio School tip line is handled, the types of tips they often receive, and who uses that tip line students, parents, educators, community members, anyone can call or text the tip line. It doesn't matter if you're registered, you're not registered, anyone can provide information to it. And we often see a lot of parents providing information as well as educators when they don't know what to do with a piece of information. So we get things about bullying, self-harm, threats of violence, um, sometimes drug use and underage drinking. Um, occasionally we'll get some just some, some like suspicious activity, um, school bus issues, school bus driving issues, administrator misconduct, all kinds of things come to this tip line. And we suggest that if you don't know what to do with a piece of information that you report it to the tip line because you never know how valuable that could be if it's followed up on or pieced together with 15 other pieces of information which is what those threat, assess threat assessment teams do at the school level. So if we get a, a tip that comes in about uh, I threatened to shoot someone um, or to hurt another person in the school, a threat of violence, um, that will come into the tip line. Then our analysts will collect all the information that they need about it, figure out what school, what individual it's targeted towards. Um, then they'll look up the first responder, so the responding law enforcement agency. They'll look up whether or not the school has a school resource officer, and they'll look up the school admin. So if it's a threat to life, um, they will immediately contact dispatch and law enforcement to make sure that someone can intervene. Um, and they'll contact the school resource officer to make sure they're aware as well well as soon as they get done with dispatch. Um, and then that information is also provided to the school administrator so that way they know what's going on. Um, or if you don't have a school resource officer, it'll go to the administrator right then and there so they know about it. 
So if it's a threat of self-harm, um, if someone's threatening to kill themselves um, and they're not the individual reporting to the tip line, they'll still provide that information to local law enforcement so they can do a wellness check on the individual. Um, so that could be 11 p.m. at night, 2.30 in the morning, it doesn't matter. Um, we want to make sure that we get to that student to make sure that they're okay. Um, they'll provide the information, they'll go out and do their wellness check, and that information is still provided to the school the next day and the school resource officer. Um, so if it's something like bullying that doesn't rise to the level of uh, someone, you know, potentially getting injured um, or a threat to life at that moment, then that information is still passed to the school resource officer, still passed to the school administrators. Um, it's just law enforcement isn't immediately contacted. Always keep in mind how important students are to the reporting process. U.S. Secret Service analysis has shown students are often the people who know the most about the attacker's idea or plan for a possible attack. However, research indicates that information rarely makes its way to an adult. For a variety of reasons, those with information do not always report what they know. Allowing the tipster to remain anonymous encourages reporting, both to the Safer Ohio School tip line and to other tip lines and apps. So we recognize as the Ohio School Safety Center that there are a lot of tip lines across the state. There are a lot of local businesses and resources, agreements with law enforcement that are in place, and we don't want to not share information just because they're using a different service. So schools do not need to be registered to use the Safer Ohio tip line. If we receive information on a school that uses another service or is not registered with any tip line, the information is still going to pass to them. One advantage of using the Safer Ohio tip line is that it's a free service for all schools. That is by 24-7 um, and you do have those options for reporting so you can call you can text you can message through the app um, there are many avenues that you can have and you can truly remain anonymous um, that's something that's pretty big for some tipsters that would like to pass along information is they don't want you to know uh, they don't want someone to know they're tattling on another person that they're with like a student um, but that's kind of one of the bigger things is is the anonymity and the mechanisms that you can use to report to the tip line um, as well as we provide free promotional materials to the schools so they don't have to print a thing. Coming up next, step four, determine the threshold for law enforcement intervention.